Genghis Khan remains one of the most feared and respected conquerors of all time. His biography is shrouded in mystery and contradiction, but the facts about Genghis Khan are that he rose up from almost certain death on the Mongolian steppe, united his people, and began a series of gruesome conquests that claimed millions of lives and changed the entire course of human destiny. For a figure so polarizing, many see him as an engine of positive change, while others see him as a bloodthirsty monster. Much of what we know about him is from outdated history books or Hollywood. Portrayals The real Genghis, which wasn't actually his name, was a contradiction, a religious man who prized loyalty yet slaughtered millions, including his own family members. Many details are known about how his army operated, but almost nothing is known about his death or burial. And his brilliance is as underestimated as his lust for bloodshed is, here are all kinds of Genghis Khan trivia and other interesting things you probably didn't know about this emperor, mass murder, and changer of the world. 1. Genghis wasn't his birth name, the man who would unite the Mongol tribes was actually born, Temujin, meaning, of iron. His name was said to have come from a Tatar tribesman who had been captured and brought home by the boy's father, the name, Genghis Khan, wasn't bestowed on him until 1206, when he was 44 years old, as part of his coronation as the Khan of all Mongols. 2. Temujin was born destined for greatness, most of what we know about Temujin slash Genghis comes from the secret history of the Mongols, an anonymous record of the early days of the United Khanate. According to that book, written for the Khan's successors, Temujin was born sometime in 1162. His father, Yasukai, was the chieftain of the Borjigin clan. The ruling class of the Mongol tribes, the boy came out clutching a blood clot, an omen that he was destined to be a great leader. Whether this is actually true is anyone's guess. 3. Temujin had a rough childhood, despite being born destined to be a leader, the secret history of the Mongols makes it clear that Temujin's early life was brutal. His father, Yasukai, was slain by steppe rivals when he was only nine, and his own tribe expelled his family when Temujin tried to claim his rightful place as leader of their clan. This left his mother, Holun, to raise seven children alone on the steppe, as an adolescent, it's likely Temujin took the life of his own half-brother in a dispute over food. A few years later, rival clans abducted him and his young wife, holding them as slaves until Temujin escaped. 4. He married young and his first son may not have been his. Around the age of 16, Temujin took his first wife, Borte, in a marriage arranged by his father before his passing. Borte would become Temujin's principal wife, but by no means was she his only wife. Borte birthed a son named Joki, but due to her kidnapping in the timeline of the birth, nine months after she was taken, the parentage of Joki is cloudy. Joki would grow to become a great military leader, but was excluded from Genghis's line of succession. The couple had three more sons, Shagatai, Ajidai, and Talui. 5. Genghis had many other wives and children, while Borte was Temujin's empress, he took a number of other wives, many of these women were taken as war trophies, and it's not clear that all of these marriages were consensual. They bore him numerous children, including a number of daughters whose names weren't recorded. For historical purposes, only Borte and her four sons are truly significant. 6. The Mongols of the 13th century were in chaos, during the early days of Temujin's conquests, the various tribes of the Central Asian steppe were scattered and mostly had control of their local area. The tribes warred often, routinely stealing horses and treasure from each other, along with taking slaves and concubines, many of these conflicts were spurred on by China, which kept the Mongols warring among each other, and not attacking their own country. 7. Nobody knows what Genghis looked like, very little is known about Genghis Khan's personal life or physical appearance. No contemporary portraits or sculptures of him survived, and the scant information written at the time is unreliable. Most accounts describe him as tall and strong with a flowing mane of blonde hair, blue eyes, and a bushy beard, however, 14th-century Persian chronicler Rashid al-Din claimed Genghis had red hair and green eyes. Al-Din never met the Khan in person, but these striking features were not unheard of among the Mongols. 8. Temujin's first conquest was the tribe who stole his wife, Shortly after Borte and Temujin married, the rival Merkit tribe kidnapped Borte. Temujin would not let this aggression stand, and teamed up with the Karyat tribe, led by Togrul, who was a blood brother of Temujin's father, along with a blood brother of Temujin, named Jamukha, 
Temujin led an army that destroyed the Merkit tribe, absorbed their warriors, and slaughtered their women. By the time Temujin was crowned Genghis Khan, the Merkits were completely gone. 9. Temujin vanished for 10 years during the late 1100s, after Temujin was beaten by Jamukha at the Battle of Dalan Ball's Hut in 1186, we know nothing of his history for the next 10 years. It seems inconceivable that a major figure like Genghis Khan would have such a blank space in his biography, but nobody knows where he was or what he was doing, it's likely he was hiding in China, as his patron Torgal had been exiled, and Jamukha had taken control of his holdings, but it's not known for sure. 10. Temujin united the Mongol tribes in 1206, taking the Khan title. From 1196 to 1206, Temujin went on a rampage, destroying his enemies and adding their surviving soldiers to his ranks. Finally, he turned his attention to the Naaman tribe, which had been his chief enemy for years, the Naaman were crushed, and at a tribal gathering, called a Kurultai, on the banks of the Onan River. Temujin was elected Khan of all Mongols, choosing the name Genghis. The origin of this name remains unknown. 11. Genghis had a complex relationship with culture, Genghis Khan is likely to have been illiterate, but established a tradition of Mongol literacy. He created the Yam, a great postal system meant to send written orders to the far-flung outposts of his empire. He also adapted an official script in 1206 upon his election as Khan, and kept written books of his laws, a complex and far-reaching system of edicts called the Yasa. Diplomatic exchanges with other empires became a crucial part of Mongol conquest, as Genghis would send letter-bearing emissaries out to empires he sought to sack, demanding they surrender, at the same time, Genghis and his generals ordered the destruction of countless works of art. Priceless artifacts, cultural sites, and precious objects. Chinese, Russian, Persian, and Muslim traditions of printing, sculpture, and painting were subjugated, with their masters almost always slain. While other Mongol leaders appreciate the cultures of the sedentary people they wiped out, the Mongols themselves left little in terms of cultural heritage and almost no written works. 12. Genghis Khan never spilled royal blood. When Jamukha was turned over to Genghis Khan, the great leader honored his enemy's request to be slain in the way Mongol leaders honored the leaders of their foes. That is, his blood would not be spilled. In one of many such executions that Genghis would carry out, Jamukha was slain by having his spine broken. He was then buried with a golden belt, a gift from Genghis when they became blood brothers. Other beaten leaders, both Mongol and those from around the world, were put into sacks or carpets and trampled, honoring the tradition of not spilling blood. 13. Many of Genghis's best generals were former foes, Mongol tribes beaten by Genghis had their soldiers absorbed into his army. Among the battles in which a tribe was beaten was the 1201 battle of the 13 sides against the Tajit tribe. Genghis was hit in the neck by an arrow, and when he demanded to know who had fired, one Tajit admitted to being the shooter. Stirred by the archer's boldness, Genghis made him an officer and nicknamed him Jeeb, or Arrow. Jeeb would go on to become one of the Mongols' greatest field commanders during their conquests in Asia and Europe. 14. The Khan relied on his four dogs of war. In the secret history of the Mongols, the chronicler claims Genghis Khan had four generals that he called his dogs of war. Besides his enemy turned confidant Jeeb, he had Kublai, not the famous Mongol leader Kublai Khan, who was Genghis's grandson, Jelm, the man who saved Genghis's life when he was shot by Jeeb, and Jelm's brother Subutai. Of these, Subutai was his best general, a truly gifted leader who is said to have personally led 20 campaigns, conquered 32 nations, and won 65 battles taking more land than any conqueror in history. 15. Genghis turned Mongol warriors into the best in the world. Steppe horsemen began learning how to fight and live off the land as children. When they came of age, they had mastered how to ride, shoot, fight, and go for days at a time without provisions. They fought using both swords and the composite bow, which could fire an arrow up to 350 yards, much farther than anything else that existed. They carried everything they needed with them and rode with multiple mounts, often cutting one open on the leg to drink its blood for sustenance. No contemporary army could match the Mongol warrior's skill, bravery, and tenacity. 16. Genghis was a religious man, Genghis Khan passed laws declaring religious freedom in conquered lands, and even granted tax exemptions to places of worship. The Mongols generally had an exceptionally liberal attitude toward religion. 
While they subscribed to a shamanistic belief system that revered the eternal blue sky, the steppe peoples also included Christians, Buddhists, Muslims, and others. No one was persecuted for their faith, the Great Khan also had a personal interest in spirituality. He was known to pray in his tent for multiple days before important campaigns, and he often met with different religious leaders to discuss their faiths. 17. Once ruler of the Mongols, Genghis conquered northern China. After his election as Khan, Genghis turned the unified Mongols against China. First, he sacked the Western Xia dynasty. Then came the Jin, his former allies, who lost hundreds of thousands of troops to a Mongol force ten times smaller. In 1215, the Mongols sacked Zhongdu, modern-day Beijing, leveling the city and decimating the population. After ten years of combat, the Mongols had all of northern China under their control, leaving a swath of bloodshed and plunder in their wake. Populations were enslaved, then either executed or used as human shields. 18. After China, he had a million people killed, conquering the western Xia and Jin was a matter of survival for Genghis. He had no intention of war with the powerful Khwarezmid Empire. In modern-day Iran, but it became inevitable after the Khwarezmian Shah executed Genghis's ambassadors and massacred a peaceful caravan. In a war lasting just three years, from 1218 to 1221, the Khwarezmid Empire was annihilated, with its population culled and its beautiful walled cities sacked. Final defeat was inflicted at the Battle of the Indus River, where 50,000 men, led by the Shah's son, were beaten and killed. The Mongols exacted such a toll on the Khwarezmid Empire that of its nearly 3 million people, at least 1 million were killed, with most being executed methodically, using swords or axes. 19. He split his force into two and brought Russia to its knees, after destroying the Khwarezmid Empire, Genghis split his army into two units. One, which he led personally, headed back to Mongolia, but not before laying waste to northern India. The other, a small unit of two Tumun led by Sabutai and Jeeb, headed west, toward what is now Russia, pursuing the Khwarezmian Shah. They didn't catch him, but they made history anyway, in a raid of such power and destructiveness that it's never been equaled, two of Genghis's dogs of war sacked Georgia and Armenia, and defeated a gigantic Kievan Rus force at the legendary Battle of the Khalkha River. In keeping with Mongol tradition, the Russian princes who resisted were crushed under a platform, their blood never spilling. Hundreds of thousands of peasants weren't so exalted, and were slaughtered. Russia itself would take centuries to recover from the Mongol invasion, and its geography was permanently changed. 20. Genghis had to put China in its place more than once, the Xia had refused to fight alongside the Khan in Persia. Which was a death sentence. Khan led a huge force against them, and crushed a coalition of Xia and surviving Jin, the Tangut royal family was executed in its entirety, ending their lineage, a problem that would soon engulf the Khan. 21. In 1227, Genghis Khan died, but nobody knows how, during the sack of the western Xia capital, in August 1227, Genghis Khan perished. Historians of both the time and the future are still completely in the dark as to how it happened. Some say he was slain in battle, while others claim he succumbed to illness. Still others say that he fell off a horse while hunting. One chronicle even says he was slain by a western Xia princess he was attempting to add to his harem, after his passing, the traditional Kurultai was held, meaning all Mongol conquests were put on hold, and all leaders met at the Onan River. Bypassing Joki, whose parentage was never confirmed, they elected Genghis's third son, Ajidai, as the new Khan. 22. The location of his grave is unknown. After his passing in China, Genghis's body was brought back by his generals as they returned to Mongolia for the Kurultai. The Khan took great pains to keep his final resting place a secret, and according to legend, his funeral procession slaughtered everyone they came into contact with during their journey. Then they rode horses over his grave to help conceal it, and might have even changed the course of a river to go over it. Numerous excavations have been undertaken to find Genghis and the treasure said to be buried with him but even with satellite imaging used recently, its precise location is unknown. 23. After his demise, his empire grew mighty, once declared Khan, Genghis's third son Ajidai, or Ojidai, picked up where his father left off. From 1229 through 1241, 
Mongol armies re-established control in northern China by finishing off the Jin, invaded and sacked the mighty Song dynasty, invaded and conquered much of India, conquered most of Korea, and most notably, invaded Western Europe, Ajadai's forces retook much of Russia, crushed two massive European armies in three days in April 1241, sacked Poland and Bulgaria, crossed into the Holy Roman Empire, and had riders scouting battle sites near Vienna. When news that Ajadai had passed reached the Mongol force in late 1241, a Kurultai was called. And the Mongol leadership fell into disarray. Western Europe was never threatened so badly again. 24. Genghis Khan radically altered the world's population, by the time they finally petered out in the late 1300s, the Mongols had claimed as many as 40 million lives around the world. China, Russia, and the Baltic states didn't recover for centuries, while Iran and Iraq, which were brutally conquered by Genghis's successors, only did so in the 20th century. As much as 10% of the entire world's population perished due to the Mongols, beyond that, Genghis Khan's legendary ability to father children permanently changed the genetic makeup of humanity. A 2003 DNA analysis of over 40 populations living the areas conquered by Genghis and his brood, each of whom had dozens of children. As well, showed that as much as 0.5% of the entire male population has the same Y chromosome sequence, and can eventually trace their lineage back to the former Temujin, thank you for joining us on this adventure. Until next time, stay curious, keep exploring, and never stop learning. This has been, your channel name, bringing you the things you didn't know about the world's most fascinating figures. Take care, and see you in the next video.